Hopefully today we're going to clear up a small bit of confusion about when we partial differentiate, which variables are we keeping constant? Now just to take a simple example before we go into the detail of, uh, of this video, let's imagine that we had, I don't know, for example, z is x squared add y, so, so z is a function of x and y, then the partial derivative of z with respect to x basically just means keep y uh, fixed and differentiate with respect to x, so that would be equal to 2x in this case. There's only two variables here, two independent variables and one dependent variable, so it's a relatively simple matter. But what happens if we have a question like this, where we have z is a function, so z here is a function of v, u and x, u is a function of x and y, and v is a function of x and y as well. Um, so how do we go about working out what the partial derivative of z with respect to x is? Do we keep u and v fixed even though u and v are themselves a function of x and y? Um, or do we not keep them fixed? Okay, so that's what we're basically going to look at. So let's just try and get a little tiny bit of space. So we have here... Uh, let's just draw a nice little pretty spider diagram here. So we have z. Now z, uh, uh, and then we have u and v, and then we have x and y. Now z is called the dependent variable. u and v are called the intermediate variables. And x and y are called the independent variables variables. Okay, and so because we have here z is a function of u, v and x, let's draw a nice little arrow, so z is a function of u, it's also a function of v and it's also directly a function of x and u is a function of x and y and v is a function of x and y and what we need to find, remember, is we need to find the partial derivative of z with respect to x and the way we do that is we need to go along every single path that connects z to x so let's just uh, maybe go in a different color here that's not a bad idea let's go in red for a second so basically z goes directly to x there uh, and it also goes to x via u and z also goes to x via v so basically we got whoops i didn't mean to cancel there i meant to um sorry about that i meant to go back into black don't want to cancel the video otherwise i have to start all over again right so they're basically what we have uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the chain rule but we have to be a little bit careful what we mean exactly by dz dx so what we mean by dz dx what it means is keep one independent variable fixed i.e. y, there's two independent variables, x and y, it means keep y fixed and let's see what happens to z as x moves. Okay, and now that equals, and let's have a look at our three paths. The first path is z to x directly, so we also have to have dz dx, but this time it's with u and v fixed. So this is basically saying, how does z change with respect to x directly. We know that u and v are both functions of x and y, but we're not interested in how u and v move as x moves. We're only interested in how x directly affects z, because we're going to look at u and v later on in this equation. So that's the first path there, connecting z to x. Plus, we're using the chain rule here for partial differentiation, in case I didn't mention that. Okay, now the second one is we go via u so we need dz du keeping v and x constant now times by du dx this is just using the chain rule keeping y constant uh, and then we need a little bit more space here add the third one is we go via v and then up to x so it's just like the one we just did here dz dv keeping u and x constant times dv dx keeping y constant. So basically these two here are telling us how z indirectly moves with respect to x and this one here is telling us how z directly moves with respect to x and the sum of those three gives us the total 
how Z moves with respect to X, keeping Y constant. Okay, so all we need to do now is just do these partial uh, derivatives. Um, so basically, let's have a look. Uh, we've got these up here, so um, maybe I should write them out again. So Z is V cubed minus 4UX. Okay, so Z equals V cubed minus 4UX. U is 2XY add X minus 3. U equals 2XY add X minus 3. And V is Y add 3XY squared. So V is Y add... 3xy squared. Okay, now we can fit it all onto the same uh, whatever. And we want to find the partial derivative of z with respect to x, keeping the other independent variable y uh, fixed. Okay, so dz dx keeping u and v fixed. This is basically the direct rate of change of z with respect to x. All we do is partially differentiate that. So dz dx keeping v and u fixed is basically just equal to minus 4u. And then the second one, second one here, dz du, keeping v and x fixed. Well, that we look here, basically. So dz du is basically equal to minus 4x. And then the next one here, du dx, du dx, keeping y fixed, is equal to, uh, where are we? Uh, du dx keeping y fixed, okay, is equal to uh, 2x, 2y, sorry, add 1. And then, what's the next one here? dz dv, dz dv keeping u and x fixed is equal to 3v squared. And finally, dv dx keeping y fixed is equal to 3y squared. And just uh, as a matter of interest, the reason I'm using these uh, subscripts here, y and u and v, is because otherwise, if we didn't use them, we would just have the partial derivative of z with respect to x here, and we'd have the partial derivative of z with respect to x on the other side, which doesn't make any sense, because we could take one away from the other and just get zero. So it does matter which variables you're keeping fixed. Are you keeping the other independent variable fixed, or are you keeping the intermediate variables fixed. Anyway, now all we have to do to get our answer, so dz dx keeping y fixed, which was the answer, is all we have to do is, is just put all of these into our equation, which is minus 4u minus 4x times 2y plus 1, add 3v squared times 3y squared, and then what we do, we could leave it like this, but let's plug in our values of u and v, uh, because what we're going to do is we're going to cross-check this in a minute. So that's 2xy add x minus 3 minus 8xy minus 4x add 9y squared. Y add 3xy squared squared. And just tidying that up, that equals minus 16xy minus 8x add 12 add 9y squared y add 3xy squared squared. So that is basically the partial derivative of z with respect to x keeping y fixed is equal to that. And we've used the chain rule on that. Now we can check what we can do uh, as we have that z equals v cubed minus 4ux. We can simply put in v and u and that gives us z equals y add 3xy squared cubed minus 4 times 2xy add x minus 3 times x, which equals y add 3xy squared cubed minus 8x squared y minus 4x squared add 12x. And now we have z in terms only of x and y. So now dz dx, which is clearly the same as dz dx keeping y fixed. There's only two independent variables and one dependent variable. We don't have our intermediate variables anymore, so we don't really need this subscript anymore. But now all we need to do is just differentiate that with respect, partially with respect to x. So that equals 3y add 3xy squared squared times the derivative inside the bracket, which is 3y squared, take away 16xy, take away 8x, add 12, and you can see where we're going here, equals 9y squared, y add 3xy squared, squared, minus 16xy, minus 8x, add 
12 and this is exactly the same as what we got by uh, partially differentiating z using the chain rule um, which shows that it is correct okay so basically um, the thing to be learned about this is first of all obviously using the chain rule here but being careful when we are partially differentiating z with respect to x keeping what are we keeping constant are we keeping the ind other independent variable constant are we keeping the intermediate variables variables constant and the way to work out the total differential of z with respect to x is to work out the direct contribution of x which clearly is this bit here plus then the indirect contributions from the intermediate variables which are these two here well i hope that's clarified um, some confusions uh, if it has please like this video and subscribe to the Gresty academy youtube channel thank you